it's really hard to believe it, but we are almost done with this semester. And you are almost done with this essay. So let's go ahead and get started because I wanna to talk to you about how you can finish up, how you can use the evidence chart you worked on last week and how you can consider the comments. What kind of analysis am I looking for? What do I want in this essay? If you haven't noticed, this is a they say, I say essay. We did a they say, I say essay earlier in this semester. And you described, here's what a, an essay said, and here's what I say to join the conversation. This author talked about these things, and I want to say this in relationship to those things. This is a little different. You're introducing a controversy over renewable energy or about the use of masks. You're saying, here's what some people say, here's what other people say, here's what the Heartland Institute says, or here's what Weiss says, and here's what I say. And your I say is an analysis of the claims and the credibility of the article that you're analyzing. And eventually you're drawing a conclusion. This is a trustworthy source to speak on this topic, or this is a somewhat trustworthy source, or we shouldn't trust this source at all. That's the I say. You're not giving your opinion on this. You're using your research to draw conclusions. You've already started that research. You started but by analyzing who's behind the source and what's their purpose in order to see if the author, if the organization, if the publication is a trustworthy source. Now you're going to look at evidence and you've started that as well. So how do you use your evidence and analysis chart? Now, if you were thorough and you asked, answered all the questions I asked in detail, then you have a really good start. You didn't answer all the questions or you had less detail, then you have some work to do. However, at least you've started. Now, I asked you to identify three pieces of evidence. Which one do you choose? Which one do you put in your paper? Well, think about which piece of evidence and which claim are most helpful to you in analyzing the trustworthiness of your article. That's the one you wanna review in your essay. So take notes of any comments I put on your paper and take notes of the things that I say in this video. Now remember, you are focused on the claim and not just the evidence. The evidence is there to support a claim. Sometimes you won't be able to find that specific piece of evidence on the internet. That might be because the author made it up. That might be because it's obscure. That might be because the author misrepresented the ideas. It can be for a lot of reasons. But remember, you are focused on the claim. The author has made an assertion and you have to decide, is that assertion trustworthy based on the evidence? So you're asking, is the evidence relevant? And what do other sources say about that claim? Now, this essay is doing a lot of different things. You're doing a lot of showing and not just telling. By describing your process of lateral reading in detail, by describing the research you're finding, by describing what you're doing, you should be specific and analytical. You don't want your, uh, your audience to have to read your mind at all to go back to E. Shelley Reed. You're doing research by exploring the web to find relevant sources that will help you evaluate the claim and evaluate the text. 
You're integrating that research into your essay and highlighting key ideas using quotations, short summaries, and paraphrase. By the way, you may want to refer to chapter three of They Say, I Say. Incidentally, and this is not on the slide, but chapter two focuses on how to present summary. Um, chapter eight focuses on how to use transitional words and phrases to keep your reader with you. All of the book, They Say, I Say, is useful for this essay. You are doing a ton of analysis by introducing what you learn and why it matters. And your analysis leads to evaluation as you determine, is this an excellent source? Is this a really bad source? Is it somewhere in the middle? And of course, your evaluation is going to be based on the analysis. So you can show how and why you came to that conclusion. In fact, you're going to be asking a lot of how and why questions. In fact, who, what, when, where, why, that's what this essay is all about because that's your analysis. So you're looking at who provides the information, why do you want to find that? Well, you want to know, is this person an authority? Does this person have a reputation for providing truthful information? Does this magazine, this article, this organization, do they have a bias that might interfere with clear information or might lead them to some conclusions that might not be entirely accurate? You've got to explain in your essay how understanding who's behind the information helps you evaluate the text. Explain everything. Don't just put it out there and say what. Add how and why. Identify the questions you're asking. Explain why you're asking those questions. Analyze how those questions will help you evaluate the text. All of this how, why analysis goes into your essay. What source are you looking at? What does the source say? How do you know this? Why are you looking at that source? How does the source help you understand the claims? Explain it all. Let me give you an example. In the Wikipedia article on the Federalist, Wikipedia says that the Federalist is a conservative news site. That's a what. You need to add analysis. Why does this matter? Wikipedia says they present false information on COVID. You've got to say, what evidence does Wikipedia provide? So how do you know this? How does Wikipedia know this? They cite another article. You need to cite that other article. You need to show how you understand that. By the way, a claim is an assertion that something is true. So, if Wikipedia claims that the Federalist has posted false information about COVID, that's a claim. It's your job to look for the evidence that supports that claim, to identify it, and even analyze it. What's evidence? Evidence includes images, charts, statistics, authorities, data, facts, things that you can include. That's your job. Your job is to identify the claims, identify the evidence. When you're looking at evidence, you want to ask a lot of questions. Where did the evidence come from? Is this a reliable source? 
what authority does the provider of the evidence have? And is this evidence relevant? Now, I might have given you this example already, but I don't think so. This is the third time I've created this video. So my brain is a little fuzzy on what I've said and what I haven't said. In the Federalist article on masks, the author Weiss says, Fauci doesn't wear masks. There's a picture of him not wearing a mask. And here's that picture. Well, we wanna find out where did the evidence come from? Is it a reliable source? It is a legitimate picture. Fauci threw out the opening pitch at a baseball game, and then he sat down to watch the game. That's a family member, and the person on his left is not a family member. He did pull down his mask. He said it was to get a drink of water. We don't understand Fauci's motive, but we do know that this evidence doesn't help Weiss answer a question. Are masks helpful? Do they reduce transmission of the disease? This picture is not relevant to the larger issue. And that's an important thing to remember. That's what not relevant looks like. It is a distraction. I'll give you that. What about that claim? So we want to look at what do other sources say related to that claim? Whatever claim it is, they might not address the same exact evidence, but you can examine the claim from a different perspective. You can identify the authority to speak to that claim. And then you start all over. What's the evidence that the author provides? Where did this evidence come from? Because every piece of evidence, every new source you go to, you have to start all over. You have to look, is this a reliable source? How do you know? What kind of evidence is this source providing related to the claim? Is that reliable evidence? It seems like it's an over and over again process. And indeed, it truly, truly is. However, this is the kind of process that will help you determine what you can believe. Now, MLA is worth 10% of your final grade. So make sure you've got it right. You've been doing this all semester and you probably know the things that you're doing well and the things you need to work on because I've been giving you those comments. A few key things, arrange your citations in alphabetical order by first word of the citation. Don't forget to double space. Don't forget to use hanging indentation. There is more information on an MLA page in the week 15 module. If you want to participate in peer re review, you must submit an essay by December 3rd, which is Thursday. And all peer reviews must be completed by December 5th, which is Saturday. I'm not gonna have time to read and give feedback on your full essay. However, I'll look at your thesis, two paragraphs from the second half of the essay, and I will comment on that. I will not provide any feedback on essays that come in after December 3rd, Thursday. The final draft of your essay is due Wednesday, December 9. Make sure you're paying attention to the rubric so you can see how I'm going to evaluate your work in, in this essay. You're also going to write a final course reflection on your paper. Now you can look at this as a mini essay in which you analyze your work over the course of the semester. What did you do? What did you learn? What did you do? What did you learn? Basically, that's it. I'm going to grade this course reflection based on specific criteria. And I do expect you to use specific details and to reference the work you've been doing all semester long. There is a page on this 
in your module. This is the very last video I'll be creating for this course. I've enjoyed having you in the class and I hope you've learned a lot of things about digital literacy, about literacy, about joining conversations and that you've grown in confidence with your writing. You have an opportunity to reflect on this video and any comments you had on your introduction and the first two body paragraphs. And I hope you take advantage of that so we can continue this dialogue about your writing. All right, that's all I've got. Have a great rest of your week.